y'all, how's it going? And welcome back to another Writer's Wednesday. On Writer's Wednesday, I just talk about anything and everything writing. For this video, I asked all of you guys which video you guys wanted to see first, an office tour, or a deep dive into the compatibility of my characters on my recent work in progress and see if their personalities match okay. You guys overwhelmingly wanted the personality quizzes, which I'm very glad that you did because that was much easier to film. I'm gonna do both regardless, but I wanted to make sure to get a video to you guys. So in preparation for this video, I previously took the 16 personality quiz 19 times. I think I know those questions like the back of my hand now. And I created a very nice Excel spreadsheet and I also found a key that basically puts into a block formation the likelihood of the Myers-Briggs 16 personalities that would most likely get along. Now if you want to keep on seeing some more videos like this, make sure to give this video a thumbs up so that the algorithm can share it with more people and that I know you want to see my face. So this chart that I am referencing is called the Simplified Myers-Briggs Type Compatibility Chart. I will make a note that the chart that I am using is only meant to be a very surface level diagnosis because there are so many different situations in which someone can have a relationship, whether it be romantic, sexual, or just friendship. This is basically just to see how common your denominators are and how different they are as far as the different letters that you get and if that is compatible. Okay, let's go to my fun, very, very pretty Excel sheet. I'm actually quite proud of this Excel sheet because I am I'm not very good at Excel, but I do feel like I did a good job on this one. I made sure to highlight the ones that are repeats. The repeats that I had for the different personality types are the advocate, the protagonist, the logicist, the campaigner, and the console. I had a lot of my characters become the campaigners, which I'm not sure if that reflects a little bit more about myself or a little bit more about the characters themselves because when I was a teenager, I definitely used to be the campaigner. So basically the way that Myers breeds personality tests are separated are through four different categories, which makes up the four letter combination that is your personality title or your personality type. We have extroverted versus introverted, sensing versus intuition, thinking versus feeling, and judging and perceiving. Those are the four main ones. And then they also added in a hyphen and an additional one of two letters that you can get, which is turbulent or assertive, which apparently does have some differences, but you are still considered the personality type if you get the four main letters. Say for the example, an ENFJ, you are a protagonist regardless if you get an A or a T, you are a protagonist. It just kind of depends on if you are a little bit more turbulent or assertive in your personality. The reason why I think it is my favorite is because it's not so cut and dry. I just feel like there's a lot of variability with people's personalities and not everybody can be placed in one box. And even though there are 16 different boxes that you can fit into the Myers-Briggs test, the majority of them that I have seen, like the color test or the Enneagram test, I feel like they're pretty limited and very surface level. This one goes in a little bit deeper on how you interact with relationships and work environments, how you feel about yourself and your different passions. And basically what I wanted to see is if I accurately am depicting these characters in a realistic fashion where they actually would get along in the social situations that they are in. First, I am going to do my two main characters that obviously are meant to be love interests. And it is very interesting because they are very similar. Both of them are more intuitive, they're feelings based, and they judge more so than perceive. But the main character is an introvert and the love interest is an extrovert. Now, at first I was a little bit nervous to see if they would actually get along because they were so similar in all the other ways rather than how they handle their own social batteries. So I was a little bit nervous that they would not get along together very well. My main character is the advocate and the love interest is the protagonist. By the way, I didn't look at this chart previously beforehand, so this is going to be my natural reaction of how well I placed these characters together. So an INFJ versus an ENFJ. Hey, they got the green square. So green equals, it's got a good chance, but it's not the top tier one, which I'm, I'm fine with. I am completely fine with. I got a green square, that's totally fine. In total, there are not very many blue squares to go around. So I believe that blue is like optimal. You will definitely get along with this person. Green is, you've got a really great chance of getting along with this person. But these ones are interesting too. One-sided match. That probably means one personality type would get along with them, but then on the other side, the other personality type wouldn't get along with that person. My guess is that it heavily depends on introversion 
introverted versus extrovertedness. All right, so Elian and Amelia get a pass. They got the green light. My guess is because they are so similar, but they do have that one main difference of being introverted versus extroverted, which means that Elian will be able to take on a little bit more of the brunt of the energy with other people so that Amelia doesn't have to. I think that's something that's important to remember with the Myers-Briggs test is that I don't believe that the goal is to have somebody that you are with in a relationship have the closest personality type to you because not only will you have the same strengths, you will also have the same weaknesses. So it's good to have a little bit of a balance. And now we are moving on to the married couples, the Kumars and the Wonders. If you are curious, Amelia's last name is Wonder and Elian's last name is Kumar. Okay, so the Kumars and the Wonders. Let's start with the Wonders. I and F J is also what Amelia's mom got. That was also something very interesting in putting together all of these different tests and trying to answer the best way that I thought the character would react is that parents and children occasionally had the same exact personality type. So Lucy Wonder got the advocate and Mr. Wonder got the protagonist. Okay, so that actually makes things a lot easier for me because we literally just, we literally just did this. Well, that's also very interesting because, because Elian and Amelia's dad have the same personality type also goes along the theory that a lot of girls like to date and marry people like their dad. I didn't mean to do this. <laughs> I didn't mean, I wasn't thinking of this previously, but the dots are really connecting apparently. And the thing is, is that with this test, it's not like a true or false situation, it's on a range. So even though you could be technically pegged as both protagonists, you could have varying degrees of percentages as far as how extroverted you are, how intuitive you are, etc. Okay, so they also get the green light. Let's try and find one where they are definitely a little bit different. So we have, Rose Kumar is also the protagonist. I have quite a few different protagonists here, which means she is an ENFJ. And Dr. Rahim Kumar is the logicist, which is an ISTJ. I accidentally made all of my villains ISTJs. Once again, I don't know if that says more about me or my characters. I mean, to be fair, most of them are doctors, so that could be something. ISTJ, ENFJ. Whoa. Apparently, this was a bad pairing. Apparently, these two should not have gotten along. So that's not great. And they only have red in like these top two corners here. So, okay, so it is barely within the scope of this is not going to work out. I do remember being very surprised that she ended up being a protagonist because I did answer, I feel like differently than Elian did. Elian does mention that she's the fun parent. So that checks out. <sighs> well, that's unfortunate. I definitely thought that she was going to be a little bit more thinking. And maybe that might've been a fault on my part because I feel like she was pretty close to 50-50 on feeling and thinking because she also is a doctor, but I think that she just barely reached over feeling just by a smidgen. The Wonders get along really well. In fact, they get along exactly the same as Amelia. The Kumar shouldn't get along. Okay, now moving away from romantic relationships, I am going to move on to coworkers. Dr. Kumar and Nurse Beth are coworkers. They have the same exact personality type. So now I'm curious if the same exact personality type is gonna show up as green, blue, or if it's gonna show up as red. Because the logicists are very particular people. So I am curious, since they like working alone, if they also wouldn't like working with each other or if they would respect their space. That is in the green. I don't know how I feel about the things that I am learning. So he gets along very well with his coworker. That's interesting to me since both of them are introverted, both of them want their space, but because of that, it seems like they would understand each other. It looks like across the board, for the most part, if you are the same exact personality type, you will most likely get along, except for like four of them. It is kind of like a maybe, but none of them are in the red, which I find very interesting. So Dr. Farr and Nurse Beth, they get along really great because they are literally the same person. The only thing that is different about them is that Dr. Kumar is the turbulent type and Nurse Beth is assertive, which I also liked that they added in that extra detail because that is definitely telling about future events. Okay, Nikki and Argyle. Now this one was a little interesting because 
Nikki is not human, she is a robot. I tried my very best to answer these as if an AI was answering them the way that she was meant to be programmed. So for the most part, all of her answers were either a very hard yes or a very hard no. So her test scores are pretty extreme. The last time that I took these 16 personalities tests, I got the same exact results as Argyle, which kind of makes me nervous because Argyle is just kind of meant to be the somewhat depressed, sarcastic individual. The thing that is also interesting about this is that Argyle created Nikki. So I also was curious if Argyle would kind of put in his own touches or if he really was just going by the book making sure that he was going to make an accurate AI for the medical field. Nikki got ESFJ. Argyle is an INTJ, which means that both of them are judging. It's the only one that they share together though, otherwise they're completely opposite. <laughs> that actually kind of checks out. The thing is, is I think that there is like an unspoken love between them because obviously Argyle is her creator, but they argue all the time. <laughs> and I want to make it a little bit more of like endearing arguments, but it seems like since they got the yellow square as coworkers, it could work, but not ideal. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not gonna work on Argyle's wavelength, but that's his own fault because he made Nikki. And last but definitely not least, this one's going to be a little bit more complicated. I want to see how these individuals react in a team. So meaning that there is going to be one person that interacts with two other people that are within that group. And I'm curious if they will all get along or if one person shouldn't get along with the group. Let's take a look. So first, we are going to start with the dream team, Sparky, Runt, and Gentry. Gentry is an ENFP, the campaigner, again. All right, so we're gonna start with her. Sparky is an ESFP, so the only thing that is different between them is that Sparky is more sensitive and Gentry uses her intuition a little bit more. ENFP, okay, they get along with most people and super don't get along with most other people. Wow, they either love you or hate you, apparently they do not get along. Oddly enough, this also kind of checks out. The thing is, is that Gentry, who is the ENFP, and Sparky, who is the ESFP, they get into a lot of arguments working together. Mostly, it is Gentry bossing around Sparky. It also could depend on age. Sparky is seven. Gentry is like 17. So obviously, if you had a 17-year-old and a 7-year-old working together in a job, that might get interesting, might not be ideal, that checks out. Let's see if she would get along with Runt. I hope she gets along with Runt. Runt is an ISFJ. Apparently, she doesn't get along with ISFJs either, which is very strange to me. Okay, so apparently, the entertainer and the defender do not get along very well with the campaigner. It's kind of fun though, because Sparky and Runt both got very different results than everybody else in the group. The majority of everybody got the campaigner, the protagonist, the advocate. They got the entertainer and the defender. Let's see if the entertainer and the defender get along together. So they basically have the same exact type rather than one of them is introverted and one of them is extroverted. Sparky is extroverted and Runt is introverted. We have our first blue square, which also checks out. They're buddies. They're, they're best of friends. They're best buds. They always are working together, getting along. Maybe they're just annoyed with Gentry for the most part, but in like a sisterly sort of way. They're all very young kids, so. They're best buds, that makes me so happy. <laughs> I didn't think that we would land on a blue square because there are not very many on this chart. All right, the last group, Everett, Nita, and Gray. Now, Everett is a completely different type to Gray rather than them being perceptive. In fact, the entire group is more perceptive than judging. Nita is an ENFP, as is Everest. So they have the same personality type. Green square! Okay, so they both get along with each other really well. Now, let's do Gray and Everett. They get on each other's nerves a lot. I'm curious if that is going to show in their personality test. Gray and Everett, do they get together? ENFP, ISTP. Oh no. Oh no! <laughs> Not another red square. We hit so many red squares today. Oh no! Someone checks out, they drive each other crazy, but they love each other at the same time. Could that count for a red square? 
Hey y'all, Editing Jasmine, just checking in. I wanted to give a little bit more detail about some of the statistics about how this experiment went. Out of all of the people that got along very well, didn't get along very well, kind of got along versus perfect match, was varied across the board. Both people that were supposed to get along pretty well and the people that shouldn't get along, I got four marks on both of them and I had 10 different scenarios that I put my characters in. So 40% of the character connections and combinations that I made either worked pretty well for the most part or did not work at all. So obviously there is some readjusting that I need to do with some of these personalities. Also, out of all of the duplicates that I had, I wrote down some percentages of the repeats. The protagonist, the consoles, and the logicist each took up 10% of the personality types for all of my characters, making the total about 30% between the three personalities. Protagonists took up 15% all by themselves, and the campaigners take up a whopping 26% percent, which is pretty wild. I also added in all the different resources that I used for this test down below in the description so that if you want to do this with your characters, you'll be able to. I think that's going to be it for this Writer's Wednesday. Sayonara, you guys, and I will see you next time.